Testing, testing. Hello, everybody. My name is Yaokun. Uh, it is my. Yeah, just testing out this live video thing. Okay, so yeah, if you are tuning in, what I'm gonna do today is a, a bit of tutorial on how to do watercolor painting. Yeah, so it's normally. Uh, like today we are going to do a bit of birds. Okay, I see I'm a bit nervous, so bear with me. Okay, so as you can see for the picture here, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, you can see from the picture here it's a bit of. Okay, is it clear? Yeah, okay. So we're gonna start. Okay, first of all, what we need is a uh, this kind of paintbrush. Okay, this kind of paintbrush is normally like you can get it from Art Friend or Stretch Commercial. So uh, it's pretty. It's pretty cheap, uh, like around eight dollars. Okay, it's good for what I like about this, right? Is that you can hold it like how you hold a pencil. Okay, so uh, it's very suitable for beginners or even intermediate level because uh, most of my students use it and they find it very easy to use, lah. Okay, so we're gonna start. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna start. Okay, so first of all, right, when you want to draw something, sorry, is the music too loud? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so you want to keep your line drawings very simple. You don't want it to go too crazy or whatnot. So okay, so uh, yeah, so I'm gonna start with maybe a simple image. Yeah, so can you guys see? All right, okay. So let's get started. So keep your lines simple because uh, for watercolor drawings, right? You don't want your your artwork to have too many lines showing. So I'm gonna start. Okay, so we just draw one wing at a time okay very simple it's about stylizing your work okay yeah the image is quite complicated la. <laughs> okay so bear with me okay, so first of all I get one wing down another wing oh I'm so nervous okay uh, yeah okay so keep it simple I mean think of yourself like a magician okay you don't want you don't want the audience to see like all your line work shown at the end of the drawing so keep your lines very light very clean okay if you can do it in one stroke just go go ahead and do it in one stroke don't don't do this kind of like too many bushy bushy strokes like it's gonna it's gonna make your your work look too uh noob man. okay so keep it simple okay very simple lines okay mainly what you want to go for right, is uh, like a silhouette of the whole bird you don't want to go too crazy with your your line work. Just a silhouette. What's inside, right? It's gonna be like from here. Right, you can see there's a lot of things going on. The only thing you need to take note is just okay. Maybe here there's a bit of uh, brighter areas. Here is darker. Here a bit, there's a bit of blues, a bit of red for the head. Okay. So these are the kind of things you need to tell yourself when you're actually uh, sketching something like this, lah. Because it matters when you're painting, right? You need to think in terms of colors. In terms of colors and very simple shapes. Okay, so roughly you have a very simple sketch. Okay, so we're gonna start painting. Okay, what are the things you need? What you need to start painting is that first of all, okay, a common mistake that people tend to do is that you can check out this watercolor. Okay, so you see over here, right? When you want to start, right? You need to create a pool of water around your pigments. So the the place where you take your colors from is actually this puddle of water rather than the source itself because if you take direct directly from here, what you're gonna get is a very saturated kind of color tone, uh, which you don't really want it. So try to keep uh keep it simple, okay? Okay, you need to add a bit of water around here. Can you guys see? Okay, yeah. So this part of water ensures that whatever you paint, right, it's gonna be pretty light, not too heavy uh, on the on the on the artwork itself. So we're gonna start. Okay, so for the first layer, right? For you see over here, any image that you see, right? You go for the lightest color, okay? The lightest color that you see on the image. So from here, what I can see is that, okay, there's a bit of like uh, light yellow over here. So that is what our base color is gonna go for. So from here, I'm gonna pick this, this very uh, look like corn kind of color. Lah. Okay, so how much water to use? Okay, for your water wise, right, you only need maybe just a, like a, cup, a glass, small glass of water, not too much. So in case you spill, you won't cost too much damage lah. okay so we're just gonna okay so can you guys see yeah so we're just gonna wet the thing okay so for your first layer right all you need to do is uh, have a bit of color from your 
painting. Okay, so, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of color here. Okay. Okay, so go for the entire silhouette. Okay. The whole thing. Don't stop. Okay, the worst thing you want to do right now is to stop because once you stop, right, the you'll create very hard edges, which you which is not desirable for the start. Uh. So go ahead and lay the whole entire uh, silhouette of the bird with a, with a very light color. Okay, this light color is just to tell you which areas you have covered with paint and which areas are not covered with paint yet. And also uh, water. So water wise, right? Yeah. So just keep it. Just keep replenishing the water. Actually, you get more than you get it pretty nice and even. Okay. It matters with more kind of like environment you're working in because you're working in a like what I am right now at Aircon, right? You have very little uh, time time frame for you to finish your painting. So try to not have anything blowing directly at you. If not the thing will dry up very quickly. So the main goal right now and what I'm trying to do is just to lay this whole uh, silhouette of the bird with a very light wash. Okay they quite so you're laying this very light. Okay. Although you cannot see right now. Okay so the next step is before you even start to paint anything else right okay so we're just gonna this where at this stage right is where you want to create your all your like a uh, very dreamy kind of effect very washed washed out effect so uh, very simple. So next up, I'm gonna use a bit of uh, indigo over here, mixed with. Uh, okay, can you guys see? So, okay, it all looks like black in the camera, so never mind. Okay, so I'm gonna go for a bit of indigo. Okay, I'm gonna just okay from the image you can see right over here. There's a bit of uh, blues. Okay, so I'm just gonna lightly. Okay, the main goal right right now, what you're trying to do right is actually not introducing any painterly strokes. Right now, think of yourself like a like a shepherd. So you're guiding this uh, pigments around, okay? See? You're just guiding the pigments around so that they fall into place. And if you see this kind of bleeding effect, right? This kind of like a uh, very soft, dreamy kind of effect, then you're probably on the right track, okay? Something like that. So I'm going to introduce... Try to keep your colors fresh. So you want to minimize... You want to minimize the kind of... Uh, mixing of color at the start. You don't want to introduce too many colors at once. Okay, so you have a bit of blues. Maybe just uh oh you cannot see. Okay. Yeah. So can you guys see? Yeah okay. Okay so a bit of blues here and there. Alright then just use the brush right to actually spread pull up the colors. Okay, put it up. Okay right now it's pretty uh the kind of desired moisture that you want to have right is that it's enough for the what the pigments to travel here from here to here without uh, going all over the place. If it goes all over the place, it, uh, it'll be quite a disaster and most people will start to panic. So, okay, so keep it very, very nice, very, uh, let it bleed around. So don't, don't really be concerned about what's going on on the inside. As long as you place the uh, colors at the right areas, okay, like around here, you'll probably get quite a nice effect going on. Okay, for here, for this case, right, the water at this place might be a bit too much. What you can do is use a piece of tissue, okay? Your brush is, can act as a sponge itself. So what you want to do is just dry your brush. Okay, then just uh, remove the color this way. About one, two times and you can continue working on it. So the main thing about watercolor is that when something happens or you probably make too much uh, pigments at once, right? don't panic. Just, oh yeah, one thing to take note that if it gets too, if you add too much uh, color or let's say you make a mistake for, for example, uh, like let's say you make a mistake over here, okay, you see a, like a dot. Never ever start to dab away because when it's dry, you are going to lock in the pigments into the paper. So that's not what you want. Okay, first of all, you want to just use a bit of water, dilute it. Okay, dilute it before you actually dab it off. So you won't leave much of a trace there, okay. So that's a survival tip like, if, you, if you just started with watercolor. Okay, so the next color that we are going to go for is a... A bit of red, red for the forehead. So for red itself, right, it's very potent. Okay, so very very potent. So you want to use it uh, just a little bit, not too much. Okay, as you can see, right, once you apply the red, it pushes the blue away. So yeah, you can see here it's a, a lot, right? Okay, it's gonna steal the attention from the whole thing. So what you need to do is uh, remove 
whatever other rates you have on your paintbrush and just uh, slowly guide this paint around guide it around to where you want it to be okay so right now it looks kind of uh, the color still not as uh, vibrant as you want it to be so okay but there's a nice like bleeding kind of effect going on for the wings like can you see yeah can you guys see yeah okay so this is where you want to introduce your next layer of like uh next layer of uh, color so i'm going to go for a darker indigo okay the areas which i'm going for is uh according to the image right okay so i'll show you how i see okay so you take a look at this right okay so you can see certain areas is a lot darker okay like around the wings the wingspan around here around here so these are clues as to where you want to apply your colors okay apply to here here and here okay why why you want to apply darker colors at the edges because uh what you can do is think of it like okay you're trying to you're trying to uh you think of it like when you're sweeping a floor okay then you're trying to sweep the dust away to somewhere so these edges are where you want to actually hide the hard edges so once because when watercolor dries right what it does it creates a very harsh uh rim around the the edges so the nicest place to actually hide these rims right, is actually around the the hard edge over here so from here right okay i'm slowly adding uh what i'm adding here is indigo okay i'm adding indigo to uh yeah the wings over here okay so indigo on its own right it can be pretty uh dull and boring so this is where the fun part you want to actually throw in a bit of cobalt cobalt over here so indigo mixed with cobalt gives you a very nice uh dark color okay without without being too uh far apart from the original color that we were using just now the cerulean blue okay so you can see right it's starting to spread just this spreading effect is actually uh what you want to see at the start okay so don't worry about it spreading so so crazily okay so once you get a okay uh for those of you who just came on the kind of color that we use uh, for the base is a uh, naples yellow so it's a bit like your uh, a bit corn kind of color can you see over here so yeah so it's a bit cornish kind of color not your typical yellow so your typical kind of yellow kind of looks like a mango a very a very bright yellow but this kind is very good for working for your base kind of color so it's i'll recommend that uh. yeah so next next color they want to use now right right now we are going for the edge of the wings so you can see this is very brownish okay you guys see okay yeah so it's very brownish over here so at this point right don't worry about this kind of like little uh for this kind of little details of the specs right you don't really have to make it too exact okay what i mean by that is okay it will just okay so for here it's a bit too wet so i'm just gonna remove a bit of water okay so i'm gonna start applying the browns over here same thing i'm gonna start from the edges okay start from the edges because uh, these are where the where I want it to be very sharp, the edges to be very sharp, the silhouette to be very clean. Okay, so from here, what you can see right there is that this brown is this brown and this blue is the disparity is very huge. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is introduce a bit of indigo for the for the browns as well. Once you introduce a bit of indigo for the browns, right, it has helped to bridge this connection between the the brown the brown and the blues. Okay, yeah, so. So this is why the reason why you have to keep your can you see okay so now the the browns will start to become a uh, lean closer towards your your blues now okay so just keep working on it okay here you want to keep your yeah so sometimes it's good to leave a bit of uh, a little, little bit of space over here because this can create a very nice kind of dreamy effect that you want to maintain it some so you need to have an eye to see which areas you want to actually keep, which areas you want to remove. Okay, so areas such as these is, uh, you must tell yourself, oh wow, okay, this part looks quite nice, so I'm gonna keep it, I'm, I'm not gonna destroy it, so you want to actually maintain it. Okay, so maintain some certain areas. Okay, so I'm gonna, the next area that I'm gonna work on is uh, this part of the wing, okay, this part of the wing whereby you want to actually enhance the contrast. So I'm gonna throw in a bit of indigo for here. Okay, once, once again, you can see indigo is a, uh, indigo and this cobalt blue they sort of have a disparity okay so what would be nice you want to throw in a bit of cobalt when it's still wet okay when it's still wet they can they merge very well because the pigments are very fine very fine then they can yeah so they create this very nice kind of effect okay so the whole thing about watercolor is that you want to maintain this uh very fresh kind of look you don't want to overdo things when you overdo things right it's like oh okay it no longer has that very uh 
ephemeral kind of feel. Okay, so you want to keep it very nice and very uh very dreamy. Can you see the bleeding is actually uh pretty pretty interesting. Okay, so next up I'm gonna work on the other wing. Same thing, I'm gonna start with a bit of browns for the edge, for the edges over here. So a bit of brown. Okay, so for for colors wise, right, you want to be a bit more be more generous with the color. Don't uh yeah, don't be too don't be too uh, stingy. Most of the time when I when I tell students, okay, uh, go take a bit of colors. Their a bit is really a bit. They just use the tip over here, then just touch the color like this. No color is gonna be absorbed into that that brush. You need to really go and dip it in like this. Okay. So what I mean by a bit? Okay, a bit mean by okay. Look at the side. Dip your brush into this color. Get it soaked nice and neat. This is called a bit. Okay. Not the, just a tip. Okay. <laughs> it's it's hilarious when you see them just take a bit. Okay. So next up, you're gonna add a bit of uh. A bit of blue. Okay, this indigo mixed with brown. Indigo and burn umber, they are best friends. Just think of it. Indigo and burn umber are best friends because uh basically they are, they are what gives you your black, your black colours. For so for watercolor, right? We try not to use black. Black itself is very uh a bit too crazy, too dark, to the to the point whereby you cannot really see anything. Okay, so it creates a bit of uh, like a kind of abyss kind of feel. So you don't want that. What you want to use is uh Burn umber and indigo. Remember, burn umber and indigo. Okay, these two, they are best friends. Okay, when they mix together, they, if you want it to lean towards a bit more towards the bluish side, you just take a bit more indigo. You want it to be more brownish, just take a bit more burn umber. Okay, so it's very simple. Burn umber and indigo. Remember that. Okay, so next up, we're gonna. Okay, I'm gonna paint. Okay, so from the image here, you can see right here, from here to here, this is very dark, right? Okay. So this way I'm gonna work. Okay, so one thing most importantly, right? You be free to turn your paper around. Okay, your paper is is alive. I mean your paper is sorry, your paper is dead. Okay, you are alive. Okay, so turn your paper around. Okay, then start painting. Okay, make sure that you're in a comfortable position to actually render your images. You don't want to end up becoming like so awkward. Okay, so make sure you can turn around. Okay, do a very nice. Okay, from here, right? You can notice that. The bleeding stops already. Okay, the bleeding of the effect stops already because the paint has uh, roughly dried, which is uh, what I wanted it to do. So, right now at this stage, right, I'm not going for the bleeding stage anymore. I'm going for a bit more details already. So, in order to achieve this kind of details, right, you need to make sure that your your brush is uh, not too not too wet. Okay, because for fine lines, right, it can only be created through a brush which is uh, which is rather dry. Okay, then you start to go for the the edges again okay always start from the edge because why we do this is because your brush is very sharp right at the edge right then the point where you start from okay is very sharp so you slowly slowly bring it in this way and a lot of times when i see people paint like this okay don't do this because when you paint like this right what happens is that you have no control over what have what kind of look that you have over at the bottom side so turn your brush to the to the area which you want to paint let's say for example i have a piece of paper over here okay so okay so what i mean by that okay so from here to here, if you paint like this, right, you have no control over what goes on at the bottom section. Can you see? This bottom section is gonna come out very awkward. Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short. So if you actually take your brush this way, according to the line, you can create a very uniform line. Can you see? Yeah, so this is a kind of uh, just a very simple trick of turning your brush to the correct direction. Then you start painting. So yeah, so back to where we were just now, okay? So right now what you can see here is a very harsh. Uh, this area there's very harsh lines okay very harsh lines and what i want to achieve is a bit more dreamy kind of look over here so don't worry okay what you can do is uh have a bit of water add a bit of water over here once you see once you add water right the immediately the the lines start to dissipate okay and if you want the kind of dreamy effect to appear again right what you need to do is take water okay bring over to the areas which you want to cover again so basically the, uh, the this whole area okay then this is where you want to throw in a bit of colors again okay so throw in a bit of colors at the edges because when you throw in, when you throw in here right they'll start to travel towards the, the other side yeah so just place it around the edges over here yeah okay so for the bottom part now we're going to paint in the tail okay so the tail over here you can see is pretty dark as well okay so i'm going to go for a dark brown Okay, so for here, okay, this once again I'm using burnt umber. So throughout the whole thing, right, we only seen four colors. So, uh, burnt umber, indigo, uh, red, and 
red and white. Oh, Naples yellow. Yeah, Naples yellow for the start. Okay, so so throw a bit of uh, blue again. Why I always adding blue? Because uh, I want this whole look to have a bit of like majority of the whole feel to be very uh, on the blue side. Yeah, so on the blue side. So keep it this way. Okay, so we add a bit of blue over here. Okay, yeah. So right now you can see the the front of the head. Okay, so for the bottom of the body, right? Okay, we need to add a bit of uh, shadow over here. Okay, so okay, from the image, you can see there's a bit of darker area over here. Darker area over here. So, how to get shadow for this case is that, okay, we're going to use a... What you can do for shadow-wise, right? You can actually take a, a bit of uh, Naples yellow, then you throw in a bit of blue. Okay, throw in a bit of blue. So, I just... Okay, when you test, so this is how you test your colors. Okay, so from here, you can see it's pretty... It gives you a bit of like a kind of teal kind of color, okay? So we have a bit of. So don't worry if your image don't look exactly like the the, the photo itself because that's that's what your job is supposed to be. Yeah? And you're an artist. You're supposed to improvise. You're supposed to create things, okay? So don't like oh my god, my my painting doesn't look like the photo. Then that's great. I mean that's great. So so just try and create colors that you want to. That you like use colors that you like people always ask me okay what kind of colors should i buy what kind of colors buy just buy all the colors that you like okay buy colors that you like because uh unless unless you all your colors that you like is black and white then i cannot say anything for that but most of the time if you like colorful colors just use them just spam okay after a while you get the hang of it you'll say like oh okay maybe this color don't really work well together with that and maybe uh i prefer a, a bit of like reds in my in my paintings why not just go for it yeah, just go for it. The thing is, don't be don't be afraid to add colors to your works. Okay, I used to to be very terrified of painting watercolor because not even uh, watercolor itself, but even just painting anything with color is like oh my god, I'm gonna ruin my painting. But don't don't be so scared of colors. Okay, the main thing is just to try. If you don't try, you'll never know. Okay, yeah. So just I mean yeah, just just quite yeah. Okay, so okay, where were we? Just okay, you guys see? Yeah, so. Right now you can see the, the yellows, so we have a bit of yellows, we have a bit of blues. Okay, right now, then now I'm gonna work on the head. So for the head, right, I'm gonna go for a, for this case, I'm gonna go for a dark indigo over here. Indigo and a bit of my cobalt. Indigo and cobalt, okay. Indigo and cobalt over to the edge of the, over here. Okay, so very simple, so keep it. Let, let the cobalt bleed a bit with your, with your, uh, yellows because th sometimes bleeding create a very nice uh, effect is what what watercolor is uh, the signature of watercolor so you need to try to utilize that uh, okay so just for this case right from here you can see a bit of very hard edge so I'm gonna actually lighten this area by using just water and just break the edge okay just break the edge over here connecting everything together okay connect this together connect here together okay so this is uh, very really simple how to actually paint a okay right now the feet looks kind of light a bit too light to for my for my liking so I'm gonna use a bit of burnt umber and indigo okay to actually paint in so when painting feet right the thing is just aim for the whole silhouette okay you don't go for all the individual claws or whatnot just go it's nicer when you look at it as a whole silhouette can you see yeah so it's it's a mixture of just go for the entire silhouette and it forms a much nicer shape okay Nobody's gonna, yeah. So if you, what, what happens is that if you add too much detail, right, your focus will end up going towards the 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 what's this? Oh yeah, the feet, which is which is not you want to what not what, you want, what oh my god, not what you want to achieve. Yeah, okay. So so you don't want that to happen. Okay, so paint the beak in. Okay, a bit of the so I'm gonna paint a bit of the eyes now. A bit of ang uh, look like angry, too angry already. Okay, so just give a for the eyes, right? Okay, take note for here. What I'm going for is not that, not oh my god, okay, not for the entire eye. I'm going for the whole shadow area. Okay, sorry, you cannot see, right? Okay, yeah, so you see over here, right? What I'm actually painting is okay, I'm gonna paint that around the eyes, and as well as this, can you see this whole shape? This whole shape, what does it tell you is actually the the structure of this bird. This is the, the head of the bird. So this is where I'm actually going to go for. So why not I have the eye, okay? It looks very really cartoony. So what you want to have is actually throw in a bit of... Go for the entire shape over here. Okay, can you see? 
Yeah, okay, so when you paint this in, right, okay, what it creates is a more because of how we recognize things, we recognize things through through light uh, shining upon things, right? So when light shines upon this, right, it creates a bit of shadow. So we're actually going for the entire shadow, the form basically, the form that it creates, rather than just the eye itself. Okay, so I'm gonna go for something like that. Looks like okay, so at this point, right, you can actually throw in a bit of uh, a bit more colors here and there to brighten up your painting. Okay. So I'm gonna throw in a bit of uh a bit of cobalt, a bit of cerulean blue. Cerulean blue really helps to add a punch to the image. Like. Okay, so you can see over here, right? So this, yeah. So uh, when this is, has pretty dry, right? Okay, this is where you want to uh, add in your second, your next, uh, sort of like your final layers. Okay, so for the final layers is where you can actually uh, add a bit more details. Because when wing, when the wings overlap, right? Okay, what that happens is that they create a a pretty nice pattern going on. Okay. So the whole idea of this, right? Once you get one pattern going on, right, you, you don't really have to see the, you don't really have to go and like refer to the image after that because uh, it's pretty repetitive. So I'm just gonna paint it a bit, of thing like this. Paint it a bit. Go down, go down, like this, like this, like this. Okay. Then from here onwards, okay, is where you want to actually lengthen this a bit slightly. So you notice that at this stage, right? Um, I'm using very little uh, water. Just using a bit of water enough for the for the paint to actually go onto the, the image itself and not too not too much so that it starts bleeding all over the place again. Okay, so create a bit of okay, add a bit of water over here. Yeah, so okay, then lastly I'm gonna reinforce the reds for the heads over here, right over here. Okay. Make sure that your brush is yeah, so you reinforce a bit of the reds over here. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this is a very simple tutorial on how to actually paint a, a, a bird with like watercolor. Okay, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy yourself. Uh, this is uh, Yaquan, and I'll see you guys. Okay, bye bye. How to end this? Okay. <laughs>